Kite Trader, Tina here once again from shortmeetina.com with our daily recap. Before we get underway, before we kick it off with a recap of the overall markets, uh, I want you to do us a solid. If this is your first time tuning in, meaning this is your first time ever listening to a Short Me Tina video, like I indicated before, do us a solid. Drop us a comment in the comment section. You can let me know your name, how long you've been trading, or you can just generally say hi. If you're returning, you know, you know what I'm going to say. You're the lifeblood. Lifeblood. I don't even know if that makes sense. Oh my God, I'm exhausted. You are our lifeline and thank you for uh, sticking with us day in and day out. And I would also like for you to comment as well, uh, which a lot of you generally do. Uh, so again, if you're new, comment. If you're returning, comment. Uh, if you're listening to this video, I want to say from the bottom of my heart, I am thankful for that. Uh, I hope everyone had an enjoyable and safe weekend. We're back at it. Today is Monday. The market, uh, as far as I'm concerned, almost never sleeps. Um, so what you're looking at right now is the S&P 500, the SPY daily chart dating back to, uh, you can say June of 2018, but I'm really just focusing in on price action. We can say for 2019, specifically what I'm paying attention to is support of 280 to 282. Uh, previously, that acted as a resistance level, meaning once the SPY got to that level, uh, we would actually fall under. Uh, we could not penetrate above that. Uh, but most recently, we can say uh, when, the, when the SPY broke out, when was that? Uh, we can say the uh, break happened. Let me move this to make sense of it. So the break happened around uh, March of 2019, uh, and since then, for the most part, we've remained above that 280 to 282 level. Uh, so for the past two months or so, again, we've been trading above 280 to 282. So that's, for the most part, a good thing. Uh, we've had a bit of a sell-off, right? Since topping out at 294.95, we've declined about 5% with the most recent low of 279.93. So what I'm really paying attention to is that 280 to 282 level. Like again, in my opinion, that should serve as support, meaning that the SPY can bounce around there, right? We can get to 280 pop, 281 pop, 282 pop. We shouldn't dip too far below that. Uh, so if we go back a few days to May 13, you'll see that we got to 279.93. But we did not, we didn't get too far below that 280 level. If we start to drift, well, one, let's paint a scenario. If we break 280 and we dip below that most recent low of 279.93 and continue to drift lower, then my bullish thesis becomes a little bit shaky, right? Right now, overall, I am bullish on the market longer term. I think this is just a necessary pullback before we continue the trajectory up. However, as a trader, right, yes, you need conviction, but if the charts are telling you to do something else, you kind of have to do it. So for me, what that says is if, is if at any point, right, the SPY starts to break down crucial levels that I'm throwing that bull thesis out the window, I become bearish and then I now go net short in my portfolio. Right now, I have not done that. Do I have shorts on? Yes, but overall, I'm still bullish, hence why we are long in our portfolio. And we're looking um, uh, at this market pullback to uh, initiate new positions, okay? So for the SPY to recap, all I'm looking at is 280 to 282. If you want more color on the overall picture of the SPY, then you can go listen to uh, any of the last five or six videos that I've done. Uh, I usually explain it a little bit more in detail. What else do we have? IWM, uh, similar story in the sense that I'm paying attention to a particular level, right? Or we can say I'm paying attention to two levels. Most, uh, the mo the one that's most prominent right now would be support of around 148 to 150, right? Closed at 151.78 today, off slightly on the day. Uh, so for, in the shorter term, right? Dating back to February of 2019, so that's about three months, we've traded above for the most part that 148 to 150 level again if we break that then things like it, it this kind of like i don't i don't know quite how to say it but if we can break if we break below that 148 to 150 level then i can say i become more cautious that's that's a better word that's the word that i'm looking for i'll become more cautious in terms of my bull thesis right 
Uh, again, if you want more color on the IWM, you can go and listen to any of the last six videos that I've done. I explain more in detail why I'm a paint, why, more or less what I'm looking at when I'm looking at this particular chart. Uh, second level that I'm paying attention to, obviously, is that 160 level. We're not quite there yet. We penetrated that level two times within the past seven months. Uh, those two times were May 3rd and May 4th. Not only, uh, rather, pardon, May 3rd and May 6th. Not only did we penetrate that 160 level, but we were able to sustain it or close above it, in other words, uh, for two consecutive trading days. So that's good. So we were able to, uh, on decent volume, if you look here, penetrate, in my opinion, a psychologically important level for the IWM, right? So we penetrated, sustained it, and then we fell back. So right now, what's again prominent in my mind is that 148, 150 support level. That should hold. It's held for about two months. So that should hold. If we can hold that... I suspect and it would be nice if the IWM can retest and surpass that 160 level. If we can sustain that, obviously, for more than two trading days, then I think the bull market or the bulls uh, become emboldened and they become a bit more strong. So that's what I'm paying attention to with the IWM. What else? And then we have ticker TSLA Tesla daily chart off about 2.6% on the day. If you zoom in, it looks like some buyers stepped in, uh, drove the price of the security up. We went as low as 195.25 today. Tesla has not traded in the 100s for, I want to say, a little over a year, if not two. Ended up closing at 205.36 again. Bulls stepped in. So obviously what I'm paying attention to would be that area that the stock broke, right? Let's pause it and I'll show you. All right, so I kind of uh, zoomed out or zoomed in with the chart. Anyway, so close to 205.36. If you go back here to January of 2017, again, this is another range. Uh, Tesla has more or less traded above that uh, 240 to 250 level dating back to 2017. And this is a quote unquote relatively obvi obvious short. I saw the short. I didn't take it. Uh, I'm reading this book, um, which is, this is kind of like uh, going off topic but sort of, but slightly not. Um, an another lesson. So I'm reading this book, believe it or not, I've been trading for over 15 years, but, and I've heard this book um, talked about plenty of times in the trading community, Market Wizards, uh, but never actually read the book. And I'm kind of wrapping it up. And, you know, in big, bold letters, the chapter that I'm on right now, it says, uh, you don't get paid for being right, right? Isn't that interesting? You don't get paid for being right. I say all that to say, I saw the short in Tesla. I didn't take it. I was right on the short, but I didn't take it. So I'm not getting paid for being right. So that's a lesson. If you if you see a trade, right? It makes sense to make that trade because even if you're right on the trade, if you do not have the trade on, you're not gonna make any money. Hence why you're not getting, you don't get paid for being right unless you're in the trade. Uh, that's one and two. I think what's more important uh, before I get back to my Tesla recap, Two is even though I've been trading for over 15 years, I'm still seeking out market knowledge, right? Trading for over 15 years, but I still I still read books. I still read books. I, I still read tons and tons of books on the stock market. At any rate, I say that to say your education should never stop. Always, always continually strive to learn more when it comes to the stock market. So back to Tesla. Uh so essentially, you know, again, buyers stepped in. I can see this making a move to 250. I still think that there's some underlying weakness short term, although we bounced off of secondary support. If I can, let's see if I can draw the line here. Uh, right here. Bounced off of secondary support here. We can call that at around, uh, what do you want to call that level? We can call that level uh, 180 or so. Again, bounced off of that secondary support. I got relatively close. Uh, it seems like we might be taking a trip up to what was once resistance now, uh, rather what was once support now resistance of 240 to 250. So I'm a little bit all over the place with this Tesla recap. I hope you guys caught it. I'm what I'm trying to say is there's so many different ways you can play Tesla. You can you can play it on the long side because I think it's about to take a trip up too. Maybe it might not quite get to 240 or 250, but I think you can definitely get about a 10% move here. Um, because again, we bounced nicely off support, volume poured in. But I think the fact that it broke 
uh, support going back to 2017. The fact that it broke two years support tells me there's some sort of underlying weakness. So there could be a trade on the short side if you short into strength, right? Fading that shorter term move. Uh, hope that makes sense. What else? And we have ticker ZNGA daily chart dating back to 2012. So you're looking at a seven year multi-year chart. The fact that I took about 10 minutes to just review the SPY, IWM, and Tesla, I'm going to speed through the rest. Zynga daily chart, you know I remain bullish on Zynga. Full disclaimer, we got into this trade uh, when the stock was trading at around the low to mid threes. Uh, we ran into resistance, uh, multi-year resistance, uh, topping out at around uh, 630, 631 pulled back, close at 615. As long as the stock can stay above here, we can call that range anywhere from 550 to 575. I still believe that this is a bullish um, a bullish stock unfolding. I think it's ready to, not ready as in this moment, but I think you're, you're in, a, in an uptrend clearly with ticker ZNGA, uh, and I see this topping out in 2018 at around $8. Very little overhead, love the chart looking to add more the minute it dips in the fives i am adding to my already existing position i'm rolling in on this trade because i like the chart longer term what else and then we have ticker acb it's off about two percent on the day but this is a trade like i indicated before we took in the premium member community when the market sold off stock is still trading above resistance we were able to get we got in somewhere around here Got that initial pop to around $9, quick 10, 15%, not 15, I think it's like a little over 10%, quick 10% in about a day or two on this trade. Uh, right now, the stock remains above support. As long as it can remain above that $7, $8 range, I remain bullish on ticker ACB. What else? And then we have ticker HEAR. It's off about 1.5% on the day daily chart again, close at 930 933 and i've done a few videos on ticker hr i mean if you go back months and months like going back to october you'll realize that i've been bearish on this stock since it was trading let's say in the low 20 sitting here at 933 my thesis is we will fill this gap this gap comes in around 819 we've consolidated for the past uh five or six trading days pay attention to the most recent low of 927 if we break that if we break that, I think we are going to revisit again this gap here of 819. So still more downside in my opinion. What else? And then we have ticker UBR, five-minute chart flat on the day, closed at 4153. Uh, again, so we filled this gap in uh, 4135, and we've been essentially hanging out in the area. I know Uber got off to a very uh, got off to a very rocky start, right? Uh, when it IPO'd, we topped out at around uh, 4485. I see here. And then we essentially declined, uh, going as low as um, the mid 30s, around 36, 13, 36, 10, somewhere around there. Since then, we've rebounded, and essentially we've been trading sideways. I think that Uber can potentially run. Uh, I'm actually, I would prefer to take this trade on the long side. So I'm going to put this on my watch. So I'm going to pay attention because it looks like they're they are. I wouldn't say in this exact moment, but it's looking like it's setting up to go higher versus going lower. But we need to stay above that 40 to 41 mark. If we can stay above there, I think from a risk war perspective, uh, the trade is on the long side with us. And then we have ticker LYFT, lift daily chart up about 1.5% on the day. Uh, so what's lacking here is volume. We closed at 54.63, but we are back testing that one support area of let's say 54 to 55 one support in our resistance. Again, we're back testing it. We went as high as 54.69 today, closed at 54.63. If we can get above 55 and uh, sustain that move, then you know what should happen next. If you're familiar with my channels, I won't tell you. I'll have you figure that out on your own and I will link how to trade a channel because if you can get back uh, up uh, to around 55, we are within a short-term channel. What else? All right, and then we have ticker GOOS, Canada Goose Daily Chart. Uh, as you can see by our notations or my notations, this was a huge, huge winner in the premium member community. I think we initially got into this stock back in 2017 when we were trading in the low to mid-20s. Stock topped out at around uh, 72.27. Huge, huge winner. 
it has since pulled back, closed at 48.53. So from 70 to 40, do the math. That's what about a 40% decline, a 30% decline, somewhere around there. So for me, it's shaping up uh, as, right, as a stock that we want to re-enter. Not quite yet. Uh, it looks like the stock is going to break this support area of around 46 to 48. But once it breaks, if it breaks, then I'm going to be looking to add. So place this on your watch list, uh, providing us, luckily, thankfully, with a second opportunity. I like Canada Goose in the longer term, looking for a better entry spot. What else? And then we have ticker MARA daily chart up about 5.7% on the day, closed at 312. So when the stock was trading at around uh, 385, close to four, I said, look, uh, it's hitting resistance, right? Um, don't be surprised to see the stock pull back to the threes, which is support. It's pulled back to 312. It might even go a little bit lower to around 250. That's okay. Uh, the pattern going back to August of 2018 is a bullish one in my opinion. The only cautionary tale I would have in terms of me trading this stock would be volume. Granted, we had great volume on one day, but the other days it's been light. But outside of that, the setup is bullish in my opinion. So again, even if it declines a little bit more to two or 250, uh, the chart in my opinion has not been invalidated. Obviously pay attention to that and pay attention to resistance of around, uh, we can say 385 to four. If we can penetrate that, I think the stock can run. So we're going to cap it there. Tina, once again from shortmetina.com. If you enjoyed any portion of this video, I'd like for you to do three things for me. One comment in the comments section. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my analysis. How are you faring in the markets so far? Uh, or, or generally, if you're long or short any of the stocks that I've mentioned here. Uh, so comment in the comment section. Uh, two, I do videos Monday through Friday. If you want to hear more videos like this, then head on over to our YouTube channel at Short Metina. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on notifications. Again, I do daily videos. If notifications are turned on and you subscribe, you'll never miss a video. And lastly, I've been trading for over 15 years, still reading books, still getting knowledge, if you think you can learn anything from me, this stock market veteran, then head on over to shortmeetina.com, sign up, become a member. Thank you for listening, and as always, thank you for the support.